It was one of those days in Cog's Hollow, and Cranky was feeling miserable. Good morning, said Tolly. Good, what's good about it? Oh dear, you're in a bad mood. Whatever is the matter? I'm fed up, stuck in this place with nothing to do. I'd rather be back on the carousel. Here, what are those? He said, pointing to something on the ground. Those, said Tolly, well, they're just uh, a sort of little present that uh, a sort of beans. I'll have these. Here, remember the story of Jack and the Beanstalk? Just what I need. I'll grow a big beanstalk and I'll climb out of here. Yes, but you don't understand. Don't try and stop me. My mind's made up. And Cranky dashed off with some of the beans in his hand. Armed with a new spade, Cranky drove to the other side of Cog's Hollow, looking for the right place to plant his beans. Ah, this looks like the perfect spot. A little later, Cranky had planted five beans. Come on, come on, beans, the sooner you grow, the sooner I'll get out of here, he said just as McTappitz drove up. Hello there, I was thinking of taking a McDrive down by the river. Would you care to join me? Cranky told him to go away and stop bothering him. Please your myself, said McTappitz, and drove off. Some hours later, Dip drove up and asked Cranky if he'd like to go exploring. Certainly not, said Cranky. I'll go by myself then, said Dip. As the moon rose over Cog's Hollow, Cranky watched for signs of growth all that night and all the next day, but nothing came except a drill. Hello, Cranky. What are you doing? Waiting for the grass to grow? Not exactly. It's my beans. They seem to be a very long time coming. I can't understand what's wrong with them. Ah, what you need is fertiliser. I think I saw some over by the wreck, said the drill. Oh, you couldn't go and get it for me, could you? said Cranky. No, I couldn't. It's terrible smelly stuff. I wouldn't touch it, said the drill, dashing off. Right, said Cranky. I'll get it myself. And he set off to find it. Meanwhile, Dip and McTappitz were discussing Cranky's strange behaviour. Perhaps he's uh, circling for something, said McTappitz. Yes, perhaps we shall go and visit him to see if he's all right, said Dip. Cranky had found the fertiliser and spread it all over the beans, and in the process, all over himself. Now we should see some action, he said, and he sniffed. <laughs> oh, the drill was right about the smell, though. Oh, what's that terrible pong? Oh, it's just my bean fertiliser. No, it's not. It's you. You're covered in it. Oh, my poor McNoose, said McTappitz. Just then, Squirt arrived. Poor, oh, what's that terrible smell? Shh, said Dip, and he whispered to Squirt about Cranky's problem. Here, do you get them beans from Tolly? said Squirt. Yes, replied Cranky. Well, no wonder they aren't growing. They're jelly beans. Oh, no. What will I do now? I know, said Squirt. You need my five-star wash. Cranky was soon covered in bubbly, soapy water. And Cranky thoroughly enjoyed it. Oh, do it again. Oh, lovely. Very soon, Cranky was lovely and clean and smelling like a rose. That's better. I think I like it here after all, he said. It's good to be with friends. I especially wanted it do not smell said McTappitz. Oh, look, Cranky, said Squirt, your jelly beans have grown into a jelly. And they all laughed, and Cranky laughed loudest of all, because they love a good laugh in Cog's Hollow.